Welcome to Merchandise Inventory. Today we're going to talk about LIFO and FIFO. So, what are LIFO and FIFO? Alright, so first let's talk about FIFO. FIFO means first in, first out inventory. Okay, so we shorten it and we call it FIFO. And so what it actually means is that the first inventory items that a merchandiser purchases are the first inventory items that are sold. So let's think about milk. Any store that sells milk, they want the first gallon of milk that they've purchased to be the first gallon of milk that they sell. So that's why they always put the freshest milk in the back so the customer takes the milk from the front so that they're constantly turning over their, their milk so that they can get the first one purchased first one out. If it was the other way around and they always put the fresh milk in the front the milk in the back would be the old milk and nobody would want to purchase that. So the FIFO method is most like real life because most people want to sell their the inventory that they purchased first they want to sell it first and then to go ahead and sell the newer items. Okay, so now we're going to talk about LIFO. LIFO is the last in first out inventory method and what it means is that the last inventory items that a merchandiser purchases are the first items that are sold. Alright, so you think that's really weird. Why would anybody do that? But let's think for example um, items that are not perishable. Okay you have a hardware store they're gonna buy a new bucket of um, screws right and they're so they don't want to dump out the old bucket put the new ones at the bottom and put the old ones on top they just dump them on top the big industry though that really uses LIFO is the um, oil industry so let's think about this for a moment you have an oil company and they, um, what do they do? They bring in oil, so they fill a tanker with it, they bring it to their location, and they fill up these tanks, these big, big tanks. So let's say they have a customer that wants to buy a thousand gallons of oil. Oil company, you know, gets the oil, they bring it to their location. They would then go ahead and take that to the customer. So they go, you know, they don't even unload it, they leave it on the tanker, and they then take it to the customer and they deliver it. So the oil and gas is a big one that uses LIFO because they just sell what's on the tanker and they keep their reserves in what you know whatever the storage tanks on their location and pretty much that's the last stuff that's sold. So that's why um, we have LIFO but they're both just accounting methods and it's how we value our ending inventory. So the question is why do we use FIFO and LIFO? they're used to calculate out the value of our ending inventory. So they help us determine what is the cost associated with our ending inventory. Once we know the value of our ending inventory, we can calculate out the cost of goods sold and our profit. All right, so let's look at an example. Okay, so we're going to start right here and then we're going to move down. So in this example, we're going to cover using FIFO and LIFO to calculate ending inventory and the cost of goods sold. So this top section, we're going to call it our cost of goods available for sale. So let's look over here. So we start with beginning inventory. So we began our fiscal period, whether it's a month, a quarter, a year, it doesn't matter. We began that period with 100 units. Um, let's say we sell basketballs, okay, and so we purchased those basketballs for five dollars. So we had a hundred on hand on the first day of the fiscal period. The cost for those basketballs was five dollars each and we have a total cost of five hundred dollars. So during the fiscal period, say let's during let's say during the year we purchased 25 additional basketballs and they cost us six dollars each so the price has gone up that total cost is hundred and fifty dollars then we made another purchase we purchased 50 units at six dollars and fifty cents so our total cost for those units is three hundred and twenty five dollars and then we made our final purchase of the year 50 
basketball, $7 each, for a total cost of $350. So we look at our units, and during the year, at, at, we had 225 units. That means at any point during the year, we had 225 units on our shelves. The total cost for those units is $1,325. So that is the total cost of goods available for sale right here. 225 units, $1,325. Again, that $1,325 is our total cost of goods available for sale. Those units were available and could be sold at any point in time. So now this schedule, the schedule of our cost of goods available for sale does not change if we use the FIFO method or the LIFO method. I just copied them over so that I can do some calculations. So once we have our cost of goods available for sale, we can then move on to calculating out our ending inventory. Because once we have our ending inventory, we can then determine how much our cost of goods sold is. So in this particular um, example, we have an ending inventory of 125 units. How do we get that? Well, we perform a physical count. So we physically counted how many units and we determined that we had 125 units. Now, using the FIFO method, I have to calculate out how many units I have in my ending inventory, which is gonna be 125, and how much cost I'm going to assign to those units. All right, so now remember, under FIFO, the first units in, so here's FIFO. The first units in are the first units out. So we, um, let's take a step back. We know we had 225 units, that was our cost of goods available for sale or the units that were available to be sold. We have a high 125 units in our ending inventory. What does that tell me? How many units did we sell? Okay, our sold units are the 225 that were available to be sold minus what's left over and still sitting on our shelves. So we sold 100 units. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now utilizing FIFO, which units did we sell? Okay, we sold the first units that we purchased, or in this particular case, it was our inventory that was on hand at the beginning of the fiscal year. Those are the units that we sold. We know that we have 125 units remaining use FIFO, we start at the bottom and we move our way up. So now I have to calculate out my ending inventory. And I know that I have 125 units in ending inventory, so my last purchase was 50 units at $7, and that gives me $350, okay? So that's this purchase. And now I have 50 units accounted for in my ending inventory. All right, so my next purchase was for $50. So I'm going to do $50, I mean 50 units at $6.50. And that gives me a total cost of $325. So now I have 100 units that I've valued in my ending inventory, and that's my total cost so far. But remember, I have to account for 125 units, so I have 25 more units to go. So what I'm at the bottom, I'm moving up. Here we go, 25 units. They have a cost of $6. And that gives me a cost of $825. So the ending inventory at the end of the period, my value is $825. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our formula to calculate out my cost of goods sold. Okay, so that's our next step, is to calculate out the cost of goods sold. Did the costs, how much did the goods cost that I sold during the period? 
that needs to be recorded on our income statement. Okay, so for the first thing we do is we take our cost of goods available for sale. So we have 225 units. Okay, so we have this number, 225 units. And we have a cost of 1,325. Our ending inventory is 125 units right here. It's also right here. And when we valued our ending inventory, we valued it at, at $825. So now my formula says cost of goods available for sale minus ending inventory gives us our cost of goods sold. So I take my 225 and I minus 125 and I sold 100 units, which we had already calculated out over here. So we know we're correct there. My total cost of goods available for sale was 1325 I valued my ending inventory at 825 so my cost of goods sold is $500. So that's the amount that I need to record in my cost of goods sold account. It'll go on my income statement, and that's what helps me lead out a profit. All right, I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to life under LIFO. The last units in are the first units sold, and it works the opposite of FIFO. So we calculated out over here that we sold 100 units. So what do we need to do? So we work backwards in LIFO, right? Because last units in, first units sold. So we have 50 units here that were purchased in our last purchase. Then we have another 50 units that were purchased. Okay, So these are the units that were sold. So our ending inventory is going to come from our purchases that are up here our ending inventory from last period or the beginning inventory of this period and our purchase. So let's go ahead and calculate our ending inventory. So we have our 100 units at $5 and that gives me $500. Okay, And remember our ending inventory is 125 units. So now we have another 25 units at six dollars and that gives me a hundred and fifty dollars so now we have a total cost for our ending inventory of six hundred and fifty dollars it's the same twenty five hundred and twenty five units it just determines which method we're using to calculate out this ending inventory all right, so now that we've got calculated our ending inventory under LIFO, let's go ahead and calculate out our cost of goods sold. So um, the cost of so we start with our cost of goods available for sale. Remember, under both mes methods, the cost of goods available for sale doesn't change, right? So we know we had 225 units. See the 225 there and we have $1,325 associated with those units. Okay, so now we know we sold 100, we had left 125 units. And what's our cost? We take it from right there where we calculated. So now I take my 1325 and I subtract out my 650 and I come up with $675 um, dollars for the cost of goods sold. And I take my 225 minus my 100 and I get $100. And it's that's the units that we sold. I'm just going to fold that. So this is our cost of goods sold under FIFO. And this is our cost of goods sold under LIFO.